you ever struggle with an issue with a family member and addiction, then today's show is just for you. When I think of your love, when I think of your forgiveness, when I think of your grace, when I think of your protection, makes me want to see, makes me want to see. Living in the Light. My guest today is Billy. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Would you like to share what, what has happened in your life? Well, on December 12th, 2012, my son was arrested in Oklahoma City on drug charges. And he was going to the Oklahoma County Jail and on his way to prison for the fifth time. So you got this phone call? Yes. How did, you, how did you feel? How did you respond to that? At first, it was relief. I was just relieved. It was good. Good. He's safe. He's okay. So you must have been afraid for his life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you have a child that has an addiction, it's, it's very scary. You don't know if they're going to live or die from one minute to the next. And how else does that impact you when you have a child or a family member like that, that it has an addiction? It's, you, you just don't know what to do. You're just scared all the time. You're, you're, uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. That's all I can say. It's just, it's horrible. So when you got that phone call and you realized that he was okay. Yeah. And going to be safe, you were like, at least now I know where he's going to be and that he's going to be okay. Yes, and he's safe. It's just like having 100 pounds lifted off your shoulders. At first. At first, okay, continue. Yeah, at first. And then after it sunk in, then I was, then I was kind of scared. You know, he's in this county jail that's one of the worst in the United States. And there's bad things that happen in those places. And this is my child, you know, even though he's an adult, he's still my child. So then I get scared for him. Absolutely. How are you dealing with all of this? Praying. Praying. God, that, that's all that got me through it was God. That's all. I mean, I went through so many emotions, you know, of, of relief, scared, and then anger. Okay, angry at him? Oh, yes. 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 Very, very mad. And that's not uncommon. If you're watching today and you have a loved one that's going through an addiction, being angry at them is not an uncommon thing. I know some people feel guilty sometimes for feeling angry because they, they want to help them, they love them, and they're sometimes torn. Have you ever been torn by different emotions that you were experiencing at the same time? Yeah, because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, was I supposed to hop on a plane and go to Oklahoma City? You know, was I, I, I didn't know. It was like, oh, how am I supposed to handle this again? Because in the past I would do Whatever. I, I tried to take control. Okay. I tried to make things happen. And that didn't work very well? No, no, it didn't. So you got the phone call, and then what happened? Did he go to prison? Yes, he did. He did. He went to prison for the fifth time. Uh, but while he was still in Oklahoma, you know, I had, I had to ask God, what do you want me to do? And that's what I did. What do you want me to do now? And he told me to send him in his word. To send in his word. So you're going, okay, I'm having all these emotions. I'm angry, but yet I know he's safe. And you have tried to before kind of take control, to try to take care of it. And you know, that is not uncommon when you have a family member or a loved one who has an addiction problem. It's like you want to try to control. It's like you want to try to do everything so that they can't use or so that they don't use or so that whatever, to keep them safe and that doesn't work. And so you finally were like, okay, God, I'm done trying. What is it you want me to do? Right. So you, so you kind of came to the end of yourself, would you say, and was like, okay, God. I mean, before you were praying and asking God, but you had kind of come to the end of yourself and was like, God, this is yours. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah I'm not strong enough. I can't change him. You have to. I can't do it. And when he said to me, send in my word, 
I thought, that's right. That's what I'll do. That's what he needs. He needs to know how to walk the walk instead of just talking the talk. So God led me. Explain that a little bit more, what you mean by that. Well, my son knows the Word of God. He knows it upside down, backwards. I mean, he's been to prison four other times. He knew his Word. He knew what he was supposed to be doing, but he wasn't doing it. He was just walking or talking the talk, but he wasn't walking the walk. Okay, and so now you start sending him things. Anything I could find that God would lead me to on how you're supposed to live and how you're not supposed to use God's Word to get what you want, but to get what God wants. You know, that is such a great point because so many people think of God as a genie in a bottle. Well, when I need help, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rub and then God will give me what I want. His Word says if you believe what you pray for, then you'll receive it. And, and if they really read the whole Word of God, it is about praying with the mind of Christ, praying for God's will. Um, yes, the Bible does say pray and believe what you're praying about. But it also says in James that if we pray with a wrong motive, sometimes we don't receive because our motive isn't right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I started sending him in every day, every day. Oklahoma County happens to be a county jail where you can send just about anything through the mail, which is kind of unusual because you can't do that with all of these facilities. And I could send him paperback books from home. I could send him just about anything. And I would stuff five to 10 envelopes a day and mail them to him. I just flooded him thinking he was gonna be mad at me. But okay. I didn't care. I didn't care, he needed, he needed this. Okay, and so for you that this was something you felt like you could do and kind of gave you hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it turned out, I thought he was gonna be mad at me, but it turned out that he, he took it all in and said it's just exactly what he needed. And so how did that help you realizing that you were being obedient to God, you finally had completely turned it over to God, and God was taking control of it, and it was just what your son needed? How did, how did that make you feel? How did you respond to that? Oh, it was great. It was great. You know, and I realized that I was being a vessel then for God, because not only was my son benefiting from this, but the person in the mailroom that was opening this information also has to read all of this. Yes. They are benefiting from this. So you uh, never know when you step out in obedience who all is going to. Exactly. Get exactly. Them. And then he was, you, it's kind of hard to get paper when you're in jail. So some of the pages would be blank on the backside. And he was writing to people. Wonderful. So they were getting Wonderful. what it, it was pretty amazing. It, oh, I bet. Well, I want you to come back and hear the rest of Billy's testimony and what God has done in her life and her son's life because of this. provide Christian, individual, family, and couples counseling, along with life, career, and business coaching. Contact us today at 618 Three three four one eight zero six, or visit us online. Has something you heard in the show today gripped your heart and you said, that's me, that's what I'm struggling with? Give us a call or email us today for prayer. Welcome back to Living in the Light with my guest, Billy. I'm excited to hear what God has done because 
of your obedience to send things to your son in prison. So what has happened from that? Now, uh, I have a ministry called Interconnect, and under that ministry, uh, we have started a program, been going about a year now, uh, called Soldiers for the Cities Inmate Mail Program. Okay. And so we send the Word of God in an easy to read form through just all different kinds of inserts, all different kinds of information to other inmates. Wonderful. So what God had led you to do for your own son to help him deal with his addiction has now turned into a ministry for you. Yes. I often tell people your mess becomes your ministry. Yes. <laughs> your mess becomes your message. And so that's really what has happened. And so what has happened within you as you've gone through this process? Oh, I feel very blessed that God uses me as a vessel for him. So you went kind of from desperation, not knowing what to do, to now really feeling like you have a purpose and direction and a sense of, of being able to help. Yes, and my son has completely turned his life around. Wonderful. He's leading Bible studies. He's leading, he just, he's a completely different person. He's leading people, men in prison to the Lord, right where he is. Wonderful. So I, I want you to hear if you're watching right now and you have a family member, a loved one with addiction, that it doesn't matter what they've done in the past. God is a restorer of life. That's right. That's right. He can use us no matter where we are. And that's exactly what he was doing with him. He, he leads a group called Positive Impact. And there's like 135 men every Friday. Sure. And it's amazing. It's amazing. So this time, do you feel like God has really gotten a hold of him, that he's really a lot, really surrendered everything to God this time? Yes, I do. And, and even though it's dangerous, you know, there, I know it's, prison is dangerous. It's scary. But God has protected him, put a protective shield around him. I pray for him daily. He prays for me. You know, he prays for, for, everybody and, and we just pray for everybody involved you know in the prisons and in, and it's amazing you know God took this horrible thing and turned it around and made it for his good good so do do you struggle still nowadays or do you find yourself you can kind of get get your emotions through the ministry yeah yeah and I mean he's my son you know and I miss him and I hurt because he's there but I know this is where God wants him. And that's and what gives you that's, Yeah, and that's what's important. That's what's important. So what are some of the stories you're getting back from people who have received some of your things that you mail in? Oh, it, it's great. It's, we get letters from inmates that say, how did you know I needed this material? It was just what I needed right at the time that I needed it. And of course, a lot of the inmates' names that we have are right there with my son. And they will come up to Jack and say, how'd your mom know? How'd she know I was going through this? And how do you explain it to them? I just pray. We just pray over there. You know, we have a file with their picture in it and we just pray over them. And whatever the Holy Spirit leads us to send them, that's what we put in those envelopes and send them. It's not your run of the mill pen pal. We don't write a whole lot of letters. We may say God bless you and God loves you and put their name at the top, but it's God speaking to them. That is, that is so awesome to be able to do that and to give somebody else hope for where they are. That another thing is that God hears your prayers, that you're praying for your loved one. Yeah, yeah, he does. And, and he answers. Absolutely. And even if you have a family member in prison, when you pray for them, God hears those prayers. And that nobody, God's arm is so long that he can reach anywhere and reach anyone. That's right. No matter what it is that they've done or where they are. That's right. I just feel like there's somebody watching right now who you don't know where your child is because they're on a drug binge or an alcohol binge and you don't know where they are. And I, I just feel the Lord speaking to you right now, just wanting you to know that he has them, that he is protecting them, and for you to continue to pray for them. 
Absolutely. What would you never give up? Never give up. What would you say to somebody who may be going through a situation right now with their child or a loved one or a family member? Keep praying. Pray. If you're not praying, get down on your hands and knees and pray because God will answer your prayers and he will. And he can cause them even if they're far away from him. You just keep praying and asking for God to turn them around and he will. Because you never know what God may use. I mean, God used your son's fifth imprisonment to turn his life around. Absolutely. You know, and there may be somebody watching right now who is an addict and you're thinking, but I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. What would you say to them? Pray, ask God to help you. Prayer, prayer is the answer. So just keep getting up. Yes. Don't stay down. Keep getting up. God, God can restore you. Um, so what is one thing, do you, do you still struggle? Oh yeah, all the time. But I just, you have to give it to God. Don't let it overcome you. Don't let it take you over. I mean, you know, sitting around the campfire with your friends, your son being in prison, is not the best conversation you want to have. Right. But I'm proud. I'm proud of my son no matter where he is because of what he's doing with, for God. That's what we're here for. We're here to tell people about the Lord. That's our job. When we finally figure that out, everything else is just so much easier. That is so true. That is so true um, because we are his hands and feet. That's right. And if we're not doing that, then we're not going to feel fulfilled with life. That's right. Okay. Well, is there one more thing that, that a nugget that you've maybe learned through this whole process that you think would be really important for somebody to know? To, well, just don't walk it alone. Okay. You know, find somebody, find a group, find a church, find someone to talk to. Don't stuff all that stuff inside and be ashamed. There, because you're not alone. So shame was one of the emotions you felt? Oh, sure, sure. Ashamed of your son or ashamed of you? Did you feel like you failed somehow as a parent? Both. Okay. Both. Yeah, and you gotta know it's not your fault. Not your fault. That, that I think is so important because family members, parents tend to blame themselves for things that happen. Yeah, and, and it isn't your fault. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for coming and sharing thank today. You. Thank you. Because I know that this, this topic is, is not always an easy topic to talk about, especially like you said, when you're living it. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you. I want to encourage you to come back for Counseling Corner. If you have a family member that is, is an addict, or maybe you are, I want to encourage you to come back to learn more. My name is Linda Chetta and I'm with the Women's Ministry Center in Bethalto, Illinois. I am the executive director there. We just finished the book series Broken and Transformed by Christy Lindley and we have had wonderful response back from that. One of our ladies even told me that she for the first time in her life has broken free from everything in her past. Welcome back to Counseling Corner. I want to thank you for coming back with me because I think it is so important, the things that I feel like the Lord is leading me to say at this point in time. Uh, first, I want to begin with Psalm 42, 5. It says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him for i shall yet praise him my help and my god the first thing i want to say when it comes to dealing with addiction is to completely surrender it to god whether you're the person suffering from an addiction or you know somebody who is to come to god to give it all to god and i love this is a psalm um, that 
that I think is so important that first it recognizes I'm struggling here. I need you, God. I'm feeling so low that it's then going to him. The person says, why am I down? Go to God, hope in God and wait expectantly for God because he is, is my help and my hope. And, and that is my prayer for you today. And that's the first thing I want to say to you as a counselor, to go to God and to wait expectantly for him to intervene in some way, just like he did for Billy and Billy's son. Go to God, surrender it to God completely because addiction is bigger than you. It's bigger than your family. It's bigger than anything that you could imagine at this point in time. It is a stronghold. It is a bondage from the pits of hell. And you've got to take it to God. That is the first and foremost thing that you need to do is to take it to God and realize it's bigger than you. And it's not about willpower. And it's not about what you can do. It's about going to him and praying for strength. The Bible says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That even means beating addiction. You know, Al-Anon, I think, is so important because there's a couple of things it teaches you. As the family member, it teaches you that you cannot control anybody else's addiction. Because sometimes when you feel like you can control it, then you feel overwhelmed, you feel pressure, you feel stressed out thinking that there's something that you can do to change it. And you can't other than surrendering it to God. You can't control somebody else's addiction. Nor did you cause it. Sometimes addicts, like to blame other things. Well, if this wouldn't have happened, if you wouldn't have said that, if this, if this, because they feel powerless over it also, so they sometimes tend to blame other things, other people. And sometimes you're going to get the brunt of that. If it's your family member, sometimes they'll make even comments to you. Well, why did you have to go and bring that up? You didn't cause it. And if you're an addict right now, Looking at what caused it isn't going to help you get beyond it. The first thing you need to do is to realize, I need help. You can't control it, and you didn't cause it. But you have to cope with it. So what can you do? I want to encourage you, if you are the addict, I want to encourage you to seek help. Don't try to do it alone. I know I've heard people say, well, I'm in a cold turkey, this all on my own. I can do this. And you know the relapse rate for that is pretty high. I want to encourage you to seek out resources and treatment wherever you are. Whether it's an inpatient program, whether it's an intensive outpatient, or just an outpatient counselor, or going to AA, or a breaking free group in a church, seek help. And if you're the family member of somebody who is going through this, I want you to also seek help out don't live in silence. Remaining silent and suffering on your own is going to create so many more problems. It's going to keep the guilt and the shame there that you don't need to carry. So surrender everything to God. Seek outside help and resources. Identify what your triggers are. Whether you're the addict or you're the family member, identify what triggers them. If finances trigger them, help them come up with a plan to deal with finances. If somebody has, has a cocaine addiction and they get their paycheck on Friday and it's gone by Saturday morning, you may want to sit down with them and go, okay, we know finances are a trigger for you, so how can we deal with this? Maybe have them get direct deposit so they won't have their money. Identify a recovery plan by dealing with triggers. Sometimes boredom. What, actually, what I found as an addictions counselor is boredom is one of the number one reasons people relapse because their mind continues to go and go even when there's nothing else going on. So identify, get busy, fill your life with activities, going to church, going to meetings, getting counseling, getting employment, volunteering somewhere. Cleaning the house, making cookies, whatever. Fill your life with activities so that you distract your mind from what is going on. 
So your recovery plan should include identifying your triggers and developing a plan for your triggers, and then distracting your mind so that boredom doesn't trigger you back into use. Pray together, have conversations together, talk about what you are experiencing and going through, because sometimes you feel so alone. And when you communicate with your loved one, see, addiction can sometimes be so difficult to understand. You as the addict are, are going, I don't know why I keep doing this. I love my family. I love my children. I, I love my job. I don't want to lose my house. But yet the draw of the drug or the draw of the alcohol or the draw of gambling or the draw of pornography. Let's talk about pornography. It is one of the number one addictions in churches today. So everything we've been talking about today also can refer to the addiction of pornography. Talk about it. Don't be silent. You know, you're not the only one. And it's the lie that you're the only one that keeps you where you are. So let's pray. Father, we come to you right now. And Lord, I pray for every person watching, Lord, who is struggling with an addiction. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I break the bondages of addiction. Father, I pray that you would give them wisdom, that you would strengthen them, Lord that you would give them discernment on what to do, what to change, to walk the path of freedom. Father, I pray for family members, Lord, that are struggling with their loved ones in addiction. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that your peace that passes understanding, Lord, Lord, would just flood them right now, that they would know they can't control it and they didn't cause it. Lord, help them to completely surrender everything to you. Lord, give them a hope to continue. And then lead them, Lord, to the resources they need. Father, I thank you and I praise you that they're not watching this by accident, that it has been divine intervention. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today on Living in the Light. God's blessings to you. You may have just watched the show and thought, I want to have this Jesus in my life. If that's you, I want to encourage you to say this prayer with me. Father, I admit I'm a sinner. I admit I need a Savior. I believe with all my heart in Jesus that he died on the cross and rose again. And I confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. If you said this prayer, I want you to contact me, Christy, at livinginthelight.tv, so I can get into your hands.